What's going on everybody? Dark and Wendy back at it again with another video and this is going to be a new series that I'm going to have on the channel. I may continue with it, I may not. You know me by now. I'll, make, I'll have these long breaks and I may not continue something, but you never know. So for this, this series, it's going to be me just going through all the official Pokemon artwork, through all the different stages that they have, the variations of it. Just because as a fake my artist, I've been going through this artwork, just sifting through in it just going in depth looking at how they do the lines looking how the shading works like sujimori is pretty much being a god you know well sometimes but not all the time but yeah this is going to be a new series faking my artist reacts to official pokemon artwork um people tend to have a lot of mixed opinions when it comes to the pokemon artwork some people have love some people still praise the old water quarter style people say that the modern style is all right but it's too clean or things or too neat and tidy things of that nature but as a but me i just like all the artwork because i just love looking at the artwork like every time a new generation comes out i'm always looking forward to how the artwork looks because i don't know it's just something about it that like the technique of it and just how it how it all comes together and how they do the just the juxtaposition and how everything just comes together that I really really appreciate and I really like it. So I decided to just go ahead and do this series, show my appreciation, just give my little thoughts about how things are going on and maybe and maybe even address some of the concerns or complaints that some people may have with the artwork. I don't know, but we're gonna go ahead and get started with number one, which is Bulbasaur. Let's see. Now the fun fact is that. The red and blue artwork didn't come until later on. Red and green came out first in Japan, but then red and blue came out, so all new artwork was made specifically for red and blue. At least that's what I believe, because red, this is the, for the red and green artwork, and as we know, Sujimori made the, made the artwork based off of the sprites. So the sprites came first, and then he made the artwork based off of that. So I'm pretty sure this came much before this because you can see how different they look. Like, the the back legs don't have claws, the sprouts open up, he has a seed. Like, people praise the red and blue artwork for being more dynamic and having unique, just having unique poses and colors and showing how aggressive and monstrous some of the designs are. And while that's cool, and people say that that, <clears throat> that, that is pretty much missing in modern designs or the modern artwork, so, and I tend to disagree with that a lot because it's like the modern artwork, well, the artwork for Gen 1 and sort of Gen 2 at least, the modern artwork for them is based off of the red and green artwork. They're not based off of the red and blue artwork. So, of course, this is going to be a lot different because you can see the, sim the much more similarities between red and, red and green Bulbasaur and fire red and leaf green Bulbasaur. They're, they're pretty much mostly the same. So, yeah, but yeah, um, for red and blue Bulbasaur, it's pretty, it's pretty good, pretty good. It has, it has the sharp blue and everything. I really like the, like I said, the dynamic of the red and blue artwork is is commendable. It's really great, and it, it really is good. I just, I just tend to really dislike when people act like the modern artwork is so lifeless and they they tone it down when in fact no, they're just redoing it in the same style as the original original way that it was drawn because as you can see here this Bulbasaur it has like the the same just basic stance just is there's not much really to say it's, it's pretty much the same thing here the, only, the main difference is the back legs and everything you can't see the the claws and everything like there's no claws here but there's one claw here and then you go to the modern there's three claws on every foot and the bulb has become like a lot more simplified and rounded, which is fine since, you know, it's just, this was just jagged a bit. So that's fine. Next up we got Ivysaur and uh, like it's just, it's just something about the face. There's something about this face. Like the color, the dynamic is still there. I still like the dynamics of it, but it's just something about it. I like you can see the more of the flower and stuff here, <laughs> but I don't know. It just it's just off to me or something. And then same deal. The red and green artwork is more kind of the basic and there's still no claws and everything and it's more just like a, a potato. <laughs> it looks just more like a potato here. <laughs> and then we just 
that you can still see some of the flower here and then you go to the modern artwork that you can't see the like the stem or the the bark or whatever and you have there's actually an extra leaf here i think yeah that you can only see two leaves here and they add an extra one for this stage here for this one and you can see like i like the shading that they did here for it to actually show the leaves and everything like this kind of st this kind of style that they did during Gen Three, I really I really like it. it. It blended stuff together a lot. I still like the modern style too, but the way that they did this was just a lot, just very detailed, very detailed, and I like it. Next up we have Venusaur. Yeah, it's 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 okay. It it it, it looks awkward, but it's dynamic at the same time. So I guess it's okay. Like I'm, I guess it's like. Why is the flower, it feels like the flower is coming forward and when it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be on its back. So I guess it's supposed to be leading forward or something. And it's just like the, le the leaves just feel kind of sporadic at the same time. It's just kind of awkward to me. Like, like this is all my opinion. So if you disagree with me, feel free to. But yeah, just something about this. And let's see, it has the spots and everything. Let's go, let's go to the next one. Yep. Okay, so this, yeah, this looks a lot more clear, I guess. Like there's still this kind of angle of it of the flower kind of going forward, but a tree or whatever going forward. The 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 leaves are more organized, which, like again, it's always just dynamic versus basic. Like this was the original, I'm pretty sure. And then, all right, they got the giant the guy the Giganta Max. And I really like, like, this is an example of a modern style that I don't think is done by Studio Mori. Because it's something about, like, you can tell by the sh way the shading is and everything that it's not entirely Studio Mori, I don't think. Like, because the stuff is more blended and it's just not the style that I s seem to remember. Like, I, I feel like I feel like I can recognize the different styles, but I may be wrong. But this just doesn't feel like it's Studio Mori, at least. I don't know. It could just be me, but I really like this. Like, when, I love when they do kind of the action, action artwork for the Pokemon. Just showing them using a move or something like that, and it's just done in an official way. I really like it. And next up, we have another Gigantamax, Max. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is just the uh, the regular rendering. Let's see here. Hmm. Well. Uh, well, <laughs> the way that this vine is kind of bulbous at the top, and this one is just kind of flowing through, and it, it's not that much, but yeah, it's okay. I, I like how the Gengar looks high here. I mean, I say Gengar, Venusaur looks high here, and yeah, let's see. Yeah, the shading, the shading looks familiar, looks similar to Sujimura, but I don't think it's fully Sujimura because he has that he has a particular style for it. But it's still good though. It's still pretty good though. Let's see. Next up, we have Reg Mega Venusaur. Let's see here. Looking at it, it's pretty good. Like it's 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 pretty. It's one of the more basic Mega forms. I'll admit, it's not really anything too special. It's just the 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 flower on its back and the plants and everything just pretty much grew a bit more. And it got a flower on its head and the leaves are still on its back, whatever. And let's see anything else. Let's see. Like this is an example of, of the Gen Six and Gen Seven. Well, not Gen, not Gen Seven. The Gen Five, Gen Six kind of style that they were using at the time, of course. So, like everything, kind of like there's no real, there's not as much definition, I guess I'll say. But you can still tell what it was supposed to be. I still enjoy like the simplicity. Like you can tell, like for the leaves here, they didn't do the shade. Like if you recall, Ivysaur, the Ivysaur leaves like actually had shading on his body, but here it's just kind of simplified like i said it's like i said i like it but it it is just kind of simplified that's all and now we have regular venusaur and as you can see all that detail that they have like this is when they started using all the textures and everything like that i really liked when they used the textures it just it just adds another element to it i i can't i can't like i don't really have any kind of concrete artistic terms that i can use for it but i just really like the definition and just how how it just came together it's just, it's just really well done to me. Like, I just, I can't really, like, there's not much else I can say. I, I just really love, like, the texture and everything. You can clearly see it now that the, makes the bark look more barkish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah, compared to this, yeah, you can you can tell the, the difference because, 
the, the Gen 3 style and the Gen 6 style, much the Gen 6 style much more simplified, which is which is still fine. And this one's just more defined and more concrete, just kind of more detail, you know. Next up we have Charmander. Now as you can see here, Char Charmander has that little bump on his back. It's it's one it's one of those things where certain Pokemon have design traits that they don't carry over or well actually since this is red and blue's artwork this was added later on this is one of those things where Sujimura would add something to the Pokemon design after he's done the oh, the first render because let's see as you can see oh wait huh I don't I don't remember well I guess the bump was always there hmm well I guess this is one of yeah. I was gonna say this is one of those elements where they have something in a Pokemon design for the first go around, but then they get rid of it later on because to make it simpler or my, maybe not look as busy. So yeah, uh, this this one's pretty good. Like the the flames going like coming down in a certain direction and everything has that has it look like it's it's waving its tail. Uh, let's see, looking at the the eyes and everything like it's some it's always awkward to look at when it comes to certain things just because of the perspective of it like the eye is so much smaller it, that's of course that's different and all that and i don't know it's just something off about it in its face that's just me though then we got the first render which is pretty basic like the the the, the mouth is kind of lopsided i guess it's really it's really funny like that all the I like all the artwork in general, so so I really don't take this any serious. Don't take this too seriously. I'm just poking fun and like, like I'm really liking it. Like just seeing how it go, how the transition happened, and then we go to Charmander itself in the modern day. It now has the blue in its eyes instead of just it being completely blue. It now has blue a uh, blue accent in its eyes. Yep, the the flames are much more detailed instead of just being well. Yeah, the flames are more detailed. Instead of just being a line separated, has actual colors and everything going through it. Um, yeah, I really like it. I really like how this came, how this looks. Uh, not much else to say about it. Any, there's no big, there's not any big difference in my opinion. Aside from it, it's not having the bite, the back spike. Now let's go to Charmeleon. And oh god. <laughs> <sighs> I remember this. Like I, I, no, I mean, I remember seeing this. I remember seeing this artwork so many times. It's just, bruh. <laughs> I mean, it's really dynamic. It's very dynamic, but it just looks awkward. And I guess what I guess what happened with Charmander's spike is that it just went up to the back of Char Charmeleon's head, and that's what was, that was going to be the whole deal. Like it was going, Charmander was going to have the spike at the back of his neck. Charmeleon was gonna have it at the back of his head, and then it just sprouts into two horns. It charges like the, the 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 back spike would turn into the horn, and then two horns would charge are. So that's what I'm guessing at, at least. So yeah, another dynamic pose, pretty good, pretty pretty dopey at the same time. Like, <laughs> let's see, and then, the 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 contrast, the stark contrast between the first one. And then, the, and then the second one, <laughs> like, bruh, like, that what dark is a it's it's much darker red. The flame tails, all right. Like it looks it looks all right here. Uh, like it's just something about the well. This was drawn on paper, watercolor, then scanned in, and everything. So you can't expect everything to be perfect, of course. So like the fact that this leg is like lower than the other one and all that that, that that's excusable, I guess. It's just. <laughs> Just the the contrast. This one's more red. This one's more orange, which builds more into Charizard, I guess. But yeah, I know. Then we got this fella. It looks okay. It looks pretty really okay. Like I said, like I said, they they pretty much for the modern artwork for the Gen One Mons. They pretty much just went back for, to the original original red and green artwork and did did some some sprucing up, some sprucing up. It looks a lot. It looks a lot cleaner, more detailed. You know, the shading is nice. The eyes, the eyes has that blue again, has that continuing on, but instead of being pitch black. And I really like the I really like how they do the how they did the fire back in the day, like how Sujimura did the fire, because the fire here is just looks really really nice. 
just with the texture and everything. But yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Next up, we have uh, the, one of the most overrated starters in the world. I don't care. Charizard's cool, but it's overrated as hell. Stealth rocks, th that's it, and it's dead. But uh, let's see here, it's it's okay. The head looks a lot bigger than it does in the modern day. Uh, the wings have all those divots and everything. One of my friends complained about that a lot, <laughs> cause like why why does it have too many? <laughs> let's see, we have the tail. The tail is extremely long. Um, yeah, okay. And this is pretty much standard. And this is the red and blue armor, so this is pretty standard. Hmm. These are pretty standard. But it's okay. It's okay. And then, uh, okay, so how is the, okay, so this, so this time, the red and green artwork is the artwork that's more dynamic, huh? It's actually having to use a move. It's okay, like, it, it looks okay. Can't really say much else about it. Looks pretty good. And so, since it didn't, since, since this is the red and blue and that's supposed to be dynamic and this is the red and green so they didn't so this is one of those cases where instead of going for either one they made a Susan Moore made a entirely new pose for it so we're, we'll get to it but first we got wait I, I don't think I've ever seen this particular artwork for Gigantic Mass Charizard wow that's actually really cool I really liked it I really like it <laughs> like and this is one of the, I, I like the fire that they did in the Galar. And this is when the uh, Sujimori wasn't really doing it. He was more of a, just a supervisor. And this was James Turner was in charge of the artwork and everything. I really like this, like the blending and everything. Like the dynamicism of the tail whipping and everything. I really like that. I really, really like that. All right, next up, we got the official rendering. All right, so looks pretty good. It it has the Suji Mori flair, where it has just has the bridge between the the regular color and the shading. Just has that all going all around. Like this is a technique that I really didn't understand how to do, but until I actually decided to ask, until I actually figured something out for, that worked for me. It may not be the same way they do it, but this it works for me. Let's see, the official rendering pretty good. Like this again, the fire the fire is okay. It's not, it's not as fluid. Well, it's not as fluid. I don't even know if that's the right word, but it's not as jagged or fluid or whatever as the the ones for Charmander and Charmeleon. But that's okay because like new style, new director, things aren't going to always be one to one. I really, I just really like how everything is like illuminated and like I, I'll always love when the shading goes directly from where it's coming from. You know like the shading from uh, they're coming from above or like the lights coming from below so the shading's all the way up here i really just enjoy that a lot sorry if i'm fumbling my words a lot but i'm just really this is just something that i really i really really like talking about and it just comes out weird sometimes uh let's see mega charizard x now unpopular opinion i guess i kind of like mega charizard x a lot more than zart y like I think I've heard some people say that they prefer Mega Mega Y. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure why, but <laughs> they, everyone has their own opinion. Let's see the artwork here. Pretty good. Pretty good. Has the Gen Six style just straight across and all that. Like you can see it. Yeah, like this is one of the things here you can tell where, like even though that there's supposed to be definition and everything, like depth and everything, they just, the shading just goes straight across and everything. Like the shading is more simple. And I like I can appreciate that, so it's all good. Like and this is how they do the fire now. The fire is now like a continuous streak. Like they use the shading technique for other colors and they put it into the for like the fire and markings and everything. So it's pretty good. Pretty good. I really like this style. Moving on. Zar Y. Let's see. Pretty good, pretty good here. Like again, I like the I like when they use textures. Like the textures are very much visible. And you can see you can still you, you can even see some of the textures of the underbelly. Like you see, like they scrub the back and forth, and then and then uh, lightened it up or 
lower the opacity so that you can just barely see it, but the it's still there. Yeah, I like I really like that. That that's a technique that I use that I tend to use sometimes. So yeah, and this is when like the I think about the Gen Six style, the Gen Five, Gen Six styles when they used to have the highlights overtake the shading. So as you can see, there's more highlights on the horns, and there's the wing all all over the wing and just all over the legs and everything. Like the shade, the highlights are just a lot. And then yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good here. Next up, we have wait, what happened? Ah, there it is. All right, next up we have regular Charizard, and this is a pose unlike the red and blue and red and green. It's kind of it feels like kind of a combination of the two. Like it took, like it kind of took red and red and red and blue's head shape, kind of the way the head was, and then had the the body of the red and green. The red and green. I'm, I'm if I'm remembering, yeah, the red and green here. So, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Tail still very long, and the fire is still a lot, a lot redder. I feel. Let me see. Let me get a good comparison right quick. It's the same red. Yeah, I feel. I think it's the same red. Same red. Oh well, it may be a little, a lot, a bit deeper, but mm, it is what it is. I really like it anyway. Next up, we have Squirtle. Now this is from the Mystery Dungeon games. Um, Kind of hard to really see really close, but it's pretty much got the kind of a mix of the Gen 4 style and the Gen 5 style. Because, yeah, this is definitely Gen 4 style because you can tell by how the, the, what, the first the lighting, because this is the yellow. Uh, and I've seen, I remember in Gen 4, there was a lot of more yellow in the shading when it comes to the, when it came to the highlights and everything. And the shading was a lot more kind of messy and mixed, I guess. But so yeah, this is definitely the Gen Four style. I really like this how this came out. Like it's it's the Squirtle's head is just completely round. <laughs> uh, but yeah, not not much to say. Not much to really write home about or say. So let's just go on to the red and blue. Now the red and blue are where Squirtle has just completely red eyes here, uh, and it has like you can tell like the shell is not like completely covering his whole body. It's just like partially. Like it has like completely arm thing, like it's wearing like some kind of tank, like some kind of tank top or white beater. It is just, it's just funny. I really like, I really like this. Like this is really cute. Like this is one of the really cute ones of Squirtle that I really like. Like how it's playing with its tail and everything. I really like it. And it's just, just the completely red eyes. Just something about it just really pull, pulls it together for me. I really like that. I really like that. Then we got the red and green one where it's just kind of. Like I said, basic, uh, pretty awkward. I guess like you could like the leg is kind of weird here, the tail is just kind of meh, <laughs> and the the eyes the eyes are still red and washed out or whatever. The hands are just okay, reaching out. Still got the old kind of tank top wife beater esque kind of thing going on. Like the sh wait, the arm is just going completely like from the forward. I guess. Wait, what? Kind of yeah, like the red the red and green artwork is always just really weird. So yeah. And then we got regular Squirtle where it no longer happens in a white beater. It just it's just completely with its shell. And let's see, the tail isn't as it, the tail isn't as swirly. Yeah, the tail isn't as swirly. The feet and everything is the same. Everything everything else is pretty much the same except for like the eyes are still kind of maroonish, purplish, instead of just fully red, which is kind of meh to me. I kind of like the red a lot more, but this is fine. Pretty good. Like the style that they that's used here is pretty good. I really like how this eye that they this kind of eye looks. So it's pretty good. Pretty good. Just yep, and just the old meets the new. Just. That this, this is what happens when you get better. Like, this is just a show of improvement, honestly. So, let's just go on to War Twirtle. Let's see. Red eyes again. I really like still digging it. The tail still waving and everything. Let's see. The ears. Hmm. Hmm. Something about this is just... I really like this. I really like how the War Twirtle came out in red and blue. 
But I don't remember the cheeks being as blue though. Though I may just be. Yeah, the she. Okay, so the cheeks are still blue. It's like I, I for some reason I remember them being a, a different color. Hmm. Like the eyes are closer together. Everything like oh weird, weird how this doesn't have the white beater the white beater kind of thing going on like Squirtle. But I guess that's the part of the evolution just growing into it. I guess. So let's see, got this one. And then we got this one, which is kind of basic. Yeah as usual just again don't have the wife beater thing going on with the slots for the rest of his so you can see the rest of his body just the shell and the arms still pretty still all right still all right kind of awkward as usual and then we got the updated version got brown eyes now which is okay i i i forget that what water had these spots on his cheeks but it's whatever i guess that the ears are okay oh and I can see that the lines are kind of colored. I can see that now. I didn't notice that before. But that may, that just made me because of how the artwork was done. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is when they started to go digital, like scan it in. I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty sure this is when they started to just scan it in and all that. Like Gen three, Gen one and Gen two were just done on paper and wallet colored and everything like that. Like straight as is. I'm pretty sure. Then Gen three is when they started to scan in. I guess and then go from there and color it digitally and then I think it is in gen 6 or 7 where it's just completely digital but well, it's just completely digital and then that's how it is going forward to the modern day but yeah pretty good pretty good pretty good let's just get a good comparison like this is pretty much the same pose but a different angle just got the arms spread outwards instead of just bringing it upwards and his mouth is closed. Okay. Oh. Now we got Blastoise. Oh boy. Oh. And I, I can, and you can literally see the color, like the coloring of it. Like, I really like this. Like, you can see that they miss certain spots or whatever. Like, this, this pose is really good. Like, really dynamic and everything. The view from, the view from above kind of deal. Really, really like it. Really cool. Really cool. And then we got next up we have the red and green one, which is yeah, just just basic. What the what is wrong with the shell? Wait, what is wrong with the shell? And why does it have four fingers here? Wait, one, two, three. You have it has four here, and it's like I guess you could, the thumb will be over here, but it's like. Yeah, I, I don't remember Blast was having four. And like the shell is just, what the, what, what is going on with the shell? Like the shell is whole here, but it's like really segmented and weird here. <laughs> what the hell? And the, like the nose is lopsided. <laughs> the nose is lopsided. What the, what, why is there, is there a bit of purple there too? I mean like, but again, all the time. Oh, you can see where the line went over here. Like. This is really, like, it really just show goes to show how different things were at the time. I, I really, like, I'm, I'm loving, like, going through this, like, just seeing all the little nooks and crannies, like, seeing the little minor mistakes. It's just really fun to look at and go back. Like, what, like, one, two, three, one, two. I'm pretty sure that's still black. I'm still, I'm pretty sure that's still that. But it's like, what? Like, how, how did you, how did you color that all the way? And why is it? Yeah, it's just a lot of questions when it comes to the red and blue artwork. I mean, red and green artwork at times. Now we got Gigantamax, the second one when it's doing the action. Now I really like, I really like this water. I really, really like this water. Like it just the multiple layers that they got going on inside of it. Like the the blending, the shading. I really, really like that. And Gigantamax and Gigantamax Blastoise is pretty good too. Just a good design in general, in my opinion. Like. Uh, it has like a whole bunch of guns at the back of its shell. More, just it just feels a lot. I, I really, I just really like it. Like if I if I if I can't come to the right words, it just boils down to I really like it. And I just can't express it enough. <laughs> uh, I really like how angry it looks. Just the shading and everything. Again, with the view, the light from below coming up again. Just really like that kind of thing. Now we just got the regular one. Again. Light from below, really like that. Again, not the Sushimori style, pretty much the James Turner style or someone else's style. Since I'm pretty sure Gen A had multiple different style, different artists working at the same time. 
because that's what happened with Legends Arc is you can tell by different styles like how <clears throat> Adaman and I Arita have like a specific style made by I'm pretty sure their name was Take and then all the other ones look have, have a similar style so yeah multiple artists can work on the same gen at the same time instead of Sujimori just doing everything that's been a, that's been a thing since Gen 7 which is good give other artists time to shine so yeah this, this is pretty good this is really good the glowing green eyes how they how it illuminates around it I really just like I really like it really really nice and the little markings and everything <laughs> Now we have Mega Blastoise. Yep, pretty. It's okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Only one gun. One gun on the top. Two guns on the hands. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, let's see. Not much to really say. Except just the simple shading again. Like instead of just going around and actually doing like the inside of the gum, like the like yeah the gums and everything too, just straight across. Um the art like you have this darker patch instead of just going whole way down and just a lot of highlights again as usual one two three four five six seven eight nine just a lot of a lot of highlight and luckily the shading kind of balances it out so it's good it's still pretty good to me and now we have regular blast toys where this, I'm pretty sure one, two, three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just three claws instead of the four that was in the original. So pretty much they for the for Blast Toys they turned it around. They turned it. They just turned it around for the Fire and Leaf Green artwork. Same. It's, I feel like it's the same exact thing. They just turned it around. Cause let's see. Yep. Forward. Back. Look back at it. <laughs> so yeah, pretty good. I really like like I really like this kind of shading. Like the shading is blended and sharp. Like that kind of shading was always cool, really nice to me. Just had I don't know, I just really like that one more than the kind of regular one. Like the the modern one is good too, but I just really is it I have a fondness for this style, like the Gen 3 style when they did it. I can't I can't really replicate it, but I tried before, but I can replicate it, but I really like it. Really, really like it. And the texture, like the camouflage, kind of the camo kind of texture they got going on in the shell. And like the little the little bubble kind of mix and match that they got for the skin. Really, really nice. And the, the nose isn't lopsided anymore. It's actually just normal. So, yeah, this is pretty. I, I'm really having fun with this. But I feel like this is going to be the end of this video. Like we started, we went with the first three starters so far. And next next time we're gonna go through the rest of this. It's, it, this theory is gonna probably gonna take a long time to get through since there's so much artwork. Like the Gen One Pokemon have like three to four different sets of artwork because of how long it's been. Gen Two only has two sets. I'm pretty sure. Well, some may have three because of Crystal, but and then from Gen Three onwards, that's when we have, there's only one. So that should be simpler when I get to that. But yeah, we so far we just went through the starters. Since they have a lot of artwork from a lot of different periods. And it really just shows everything. Um, yeah, so far this is really fun. Like just going through, poking fun at it. Just pointing out all like, the little flaws and just gushing about it. it just, this is just really fun for me. But uh, yeah, let me know if you guys want to see more of it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to uh, let me know in the comments what's your favorite artwork of, of it was. Because I'm pretty sure I like... Uh, I really like, for some reason, I really just like Gigantamax uh, Blast Toys a lot. Because it's just, bruh, like, look at it. Just, especially this one. Like, like I said, I love the water and just, like, the detail of the water and everything. And just how aggressive it looks and all that. I just really like that. But, yeah, that's just, that would be that would be it for now. Um, like, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Dark and Windy out.